Hello, everyone. Welcome to Jelly Bear Studios, a place that will share interesting tech and geeky stuff in our everyday lives. I'm your host, Little Bear. Today, as our very first episode, I would like to talk about a very classic, or one may say, an old video game console, and that is the Intellivision. Let's first see in the real life, and here it is. Ta-da, what do you think? I know it's very different than the modern game consoles, right? It's not so much sleek or clean design. In fact, with all these wooden panels, it kind of look like antique, right? In fact, I literally saw this in a science museum. But don't worry, I didn't steal that one. I do own this one. So let's start to address the very important question that we teed it up at the beginning. How old is this console? What's your best guess? Well, one, two, three, here's your answer. It was first released in 1979 by Mattel Electronics. So it's more than 40 years old. By the way, you did hear me right. That is the same Mattel that today mostly sells toy cars or Barbies. But that's not a topic for today. Let's go back to talking about Intellivisions. So let's first talk about some quick facts about it. When it was first launched, the price was $299. What does that mean? Well, that's about a thousand bucks today. So think about it. Maybe your Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5 are actually not that expensive, right? You can buy them both with that price. And the people were buying them like crazy. Think about the population back then, plus high price tech. They easily still sold like 3 million consoles. And they were highly profitable as well. For example, in 1982 alone, Mattel made more than 100 million in profit by selling the consoles, the games, and the services. Not a bad number even for today, right? So now maybe let's fully embrace the vibe of 1979 by watching a quick video clip of the commercial at the time. In television. The intelligent home video system. In television turns your TV set into a family entertainment center. Television. In television, it's a lot more fun and a bigger challenge. You are no game plays the same way twice. More realistic. See how the players move. Listen to the sound effects. The roar of the crowd. The Intellivision also came with a bunch of console firsts. It was the first console came with a 16-bit processor. It was the first console that offers a subscription service through cable service, so you can download the game on the fly. I'm sure you're curious now. What will be the downloading speed? Well, surprise, surprise! On average, it took 10 seconds to download the game. I know, don't you wish Halo can download that fast? Well, that mostly due to the game so small back then, but it's very convenient, right? Don't have to wait. The next first is even more interesting in my opinion. It was the first console that can play games with spoken words in it. Can you believe? Consoles before that can only play up to two sounds, so you can call that simple music, I guess? Well, here's the example of the speech from Bomb Squad. They'll never do it in time. The cold, the cold, the you out, the cold. One of the ways the Intellivision tries to stand out from its main rival, Atari 2600, was focusing on realism. What does realism here mean? It basically means allowing games to create more rules to make them closer to real life. As you know, Atari 2600 had one button on each controller, which means a character can only jump or shoot or doing any one thing at a given time. Yet, the Intellivision has 16 buttons plus a disc that acts as joystick that opens up a lot more possibilities. For example, the game Bomb Squad has a button for each of the four different tools to choose from and the different actions you can do for each of them. Well, after talking about the positive side of it, there is also a downside. All these bells and whistles means the game's extremely complicated, and it's very difficult to understand how to play without a tutorial. Oh, by the way, there is actually no in-game tutorial because of limited storage, so you really better read one of these very carefully before you play any games. Let's talk about the cost. Oh, oh, hang on, actually. Um... Oh, silly me, it's... Actually, not a phone, obviously, but they totally look like old phones, isn't it? Well, as fun as they look, I actually believe they're one of the very innovative part of the console and it makes them kind of stand out. 
from the rivals and will always help them hold a place in the video game history. So, yeah, to say that, let's first introduce in this sheets, which are called overlays. Basically, now the video game developers can design these sheets together with their game so that gamers always knows what each button means. So for example, this is a sheet for the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. If I just slide it in, well, well, squeeze, squeeze, get my way in there. So now look, I have this tailored to the game controllers for me to play the game. How cool is that? Well, comparing to the modern game consoles where Y is, for example, A means jump. All right, now let's take it for a spin. The game I want to play today is called Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I know it got a similar name as a role-playing game, but besides having dragons in it, they aren't any similar. This is actually one of the best games, in my opinion, for the system. So the first thing to play a game, putting the game in, and the thing you should know is you kind of really need to jam pretty hard. So make sure the game is in, and we're ready. The goal of the game is to get to the cloudy mountain all the way to the right of the screen so I can unite the two pieces of crowns in there. In order to get there, I need to collect the different tools in different colors of mountains as shown here. So I can go through the forest, gates, and the rivers. We know we need to go through a gate, so let's go inside the purple mountain first. As you can see inside the mountain, this pretty much maze. We need to go through... Um, Okay, be careful with the spiders. They don't hurt you, but they do conceal arrows. So the goal is to find the key and, and ideally some arrows. Shoot this spider. Mm -hmm. Oh, great, some arrows. Perfect. Load yourself up. Oh, I heard a dragon. That's a dragon sound, so let's try to shoot it. Stupid disc made me hurt myself. I'm blue now. Okay, at least the dragon's gone. Oh, here's the key. Perfect. So let's try to find an exit. Hopefully it's not gonna take too long. Let's try this way. Stupid spider. Let's try to keep going. Oh, I bet they're loud. Oh, a dragon guarding the exit. Cool, yeah, all right, not too bad, huh? items so let's go inside the cloudy mountain when you find the boxes, which are protected by dragons oh a dragon already well shoot 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 um, again all right well not too bad huh the first piece so let's find the second piece what it's right here shoot, shoot, shoot. what wow i guess we're done sometimes you're really lucky with these randomly generated maps right oh we found a one isn't it pretty exciting I know it's pretty different and um, it's kind of exhausting for our eyes, right, to focus on the little dot. But it's overall, it's a pretty great game and it's pretty unique, right? Well, one last thing, if you liked the video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, I'm your host, Little Bear, signing off. In television. The intelligence.